Hello and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching COVID-19 India Fights Back. I'm Frank Rausen Pereira. Well, the nationwide serological survey conducted has suggested that one out of every five Indians may have been exposed to the coronavirus and there are a large number of people still susceptible to get the infection. The government in regard with this data highlighted the need for vaccination in the country. Dr. Balram Bhargava, Director General of the Indian Council of Medical Research, said that the main takeaway from the survey is that there is still a large number of people who are vulnerable and vaccinated against the infection has become necessary. ICMR has also reiterated that prevention is crucial and much needed at this point. In the survey conducted between May 11th and June 4th last year, uh, the zero prevalence was just 0.7%. This increased and was recorded at 7.1% at the time the second zero survey was conducted between August 17th and September 22nd, 2020. The third nationwide zero survey between December 17th, 2020 and January 8th this year uh, has suggested different uh, or rather indicated overall super uh, zero prevalence to be recorded at 21.5%. It is to note that these indications are based on the people who have been surveyed. Uh, the zero survey data done this time also recorded a higher number of COVID-19 cases in children and this is a significant change when compared to the second zero survey done in India. In this edition of COVID-19 India Fights Back, we will analyze the third nationwide zero survey. Joining me on the program today are Dr. Rohit Sarin, a former director, National Institute of Tuberculosis and Respiratory Diseases. Dr. Manoj Murhekar, director, the National Institute of Epidemiology, Chennai. And uh, Dr. Neeraj Nishchal, associate professor, Department of Medicine, Ames, New Delhi. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of COVID-19 India Fights Back. All right, Dr. Sarin, let me start the program with you first. You know, let's understand and analyze the data that uh, has come out of the third nationwide zero survey. Your initial thoughts. I think uh, uh, this survey has uh, given us a lot to ponder on. Uh, uh, you see, there were uh, different types of reports which were coming and even the observations that, okay, the number of cases has uh, declined uh, significantly uh, was uh, really giving us a sense as if everything is back to normal. And uh, the survey really tells us that, no, we are still far from the goal, uh, you know, and uh, we uh, really need to in fact, uh, step up the efforts to ensure that uh, we are able to maintain some sort of uh, uh, a protection uh, against this particular illness and, and this infection. The survey, uh, you know, the broader picture you have uh, conveyed, Frank, but uh, I would say that uh, the survey also brings out subtle differences uh, which are there uh, between uh, the urban setup and uh, the uh, rural setup. Uh, you know, the survey very clearly pointed out that in the urban situation, we will uh, be getting definitely more number of infections. And uh, in that context, uh, I will say that uh, uh, the transmission rate uh, in the urban setup is definitely much higher as compared to the rural setup. In rural setup, it was in fact below 20%, 19 point something, and in the urban setup, it is more than 30%. So uh, the, the second thing which the survey very again clearly spelled out is that uh, yes, children are equally infected. They are equally involved in this particular uh, transmission risk. You know, earlier it was was that, well, maybe the, the virus spares the children or maybe the morbidity in the children is less. But the survey very clearly indicated that, yes, the in children are also getting infected. And uh, uh, amongst the different groups of populations which this survey has really worked on, you know, this has been a very extensive survey. I mean, uh, 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 21 states, 70 districts, 700 villages, Rural, urban, children, adults, healthcare personnel, other, uh, you know, frontline workers, general community, everyone has been surveyed. And uh, we find that uh, amongst the healthcare personnel, probably the, the, uh, the survey very clearly indicated that they are 
uh, at the highest risk and uh, uh, you know uh, the positivity rate was over 25%. Right. So the survey has given us a lot of information and uh, at the same time it has also indicated that we have to continue on with all our efforts with renewed vigor and probably the need for vaccine is paramount at this stage. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so Dr. Murekar, let me come across to you now because you've uh, been closely associated and worked uh, on the survey itself. So, you know, what were some of the challenges that were faced during uh, the, the process? How was the process undertaken? You know, how did you go about, uh, uh, you know, undertaking the survey itself? And what were some of the stark differences, say, from one to two and then two to three? Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Frank, and thanks for inviting me on this show. Uh, uh, very briefly, I will tell what we did as part of uh, this third. Uh, and as uh, just for the information of the readers, uh, the Zero Surveys is a very important tool to know what proportion of the population is exposed to uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus or infection. Uh, uh, prior to the third survey, uh, ICMR conducted the first survey in May, as you mentioned, and second survey in, in September. Uh, this, uh, this survey basically uh, covered, uh, was conducted in 70 districts, and in, from 70 districts, we selected 700 uh, clusters that, that were villages or wards from these uh, 70 districts, spread across uh, 21 uh, states. And, and the first survey was conducted only among adults, where the second and third survey were conducted among uh, Individuals who are aged more than uh, or equal to 10 years. Uh, so, uh, again, in the third survey, we had one more component added uh, that is healthcare workers, uh, because, because as you know, uh, healthcare workers were the first priority group uh, that were targeted for vaccination. Uh, so, this third survey was conducted. Uh, so, all the three surveys were conducted in same villages, uh, same 700 villages, same 70 districts. And uh, what we found uh, as part of uh, third zero survey was, uh, uh, as you rightly mentioned, 21.5% of the general population was uh, exposed to the virus, uh, whereas uh, about 25% of uh, healthcare workers were uh, affected because of this uh, infection. What uh, uh, the key highlights of this survey is that uh, the infection or zero prevalence has increased about tenfold from first to second survey, uh, whereas it has increased by about threefold uh, between between September to December uh, 2020. Uh, second thing, what we also uh, uh, highlight is that uh, children, uh, about 25 percent of the children, were exposed to uh, infection. Although the number of children that were surveyed were less, about eight percent of uh, the total population that was surveyed. Uh, or total individuals that were surveyed were children. But nevertheless, what the important message is that children also were, uh, were affected. And the, the broader message is that uh, a large proportion of population is still susceptible uh, to the infection. Uh, we know that the zero surveys are, uh, are under estimation of actual prevalence because antibodies decline over time. But we can say at the minimum that 20 year or 1 in 5 individuals are exposed. And and four in five individuals are still susceptible. They can get infection. So uh, although we are seeing a decline in number of cases uh, since September, uh, we need to be vigilant. We need we cannot be complacent. We need to continue to follow the non-pharmaceutical interventions uh, in terms of hand washing, in terms of uh, use of masks, physical distancing. Mm. Also, we need to have very very good surveillance to detect any uh, rise in number of cases. And and the last important point is that the vaccination uh, will be a key to further increase the immunity in the population and thereby reduce the transmission uh, of infection in the community. Right. Absolutely. All right. Dr. Neeraj Nishchal, let me bring you into the picture now. You know, let's first un also understand, you know, uh, what is a zero survey and what is the idea behind it? How does it help when we carry out these surveys? If you can unmute, please. So uh, the idea of zero survey is to find out the exact disease burden. So uh, because with this COVID-19 uh, anticipated around 80 to 85 percent of people were either asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic. They could have easily been missed uh, because of lack of symptoms and because of which they might not have got tested. 
so that's why what is the exact burden which we we uh, this country has faced as as far as covid 19 is concerned so this zero prevalence will try to bring uh, that forward as rightly mentioned by dr manoj that uh, with time the antibody response comes down so definitely the exact burden still may not be very clear we could uh, we may have, we might have been higher burden of cases uh, during the peak time but at the same time uh the everybody is talking about herd immunity ki as if uh, this herd immunity will come through natural infection itself so that that's something which we have to be very careful of because even if uh, most of us are recovering but at least 1.5 to 2% of unfortunate people will not recover they will have some sort of complication or they will lose their life so that's why this guard, lowering of guard because of the decline in number of cases will be very dangerous thing i will say uh luckily where the uh, number of cases has come down below 10000 across the country which is a good thing but uh, learning from the experience of other western countries and uh, uh, latin american countries one should not be uh, getting very complacent and covid appro- appropriate behavior has to uh, be continued and everybody has been talking about vaccine right from the start of pandemic and now that vaccine has come we have to be Uh, we have to understand that it's a vaccination that is going to end the pandemic not vaccine so just merely because vaccine is available pandemic will end that's not that should not be the message vaccination whenever your turn comes you have to come forward and i feel it's the virus that should be scared of this vaccine and not us so it's important that vaccination and covid appropriate behavior these two things needs to be uh, followed very rigorously to end this pandemic absolutely all right um so dr sareen uh you know a simple follow up question i mean it's an obvious question so we've got about 1 in 5 indians according to the zero survey or the third nationwide zero survey which suggests that 1 in 5 indians have been infected by the corona virus so there's about uh, 80% of the population that still can be affected as a result of this and that's why we need to be careful but yet the number of cases and the number of deaths are dropping drastically day by day what does that suggest i think uh, it is uh, uh, again very clear that uh, whatever steps that have been taken by and large they are effective you see and uh, uh, the number of cases are actually uh, uh, a component of the transmission which is taking place in the society and uh, if we are having uh, the covid appropriate behavior definitely the transmission is uh, reduced to a larger extent and uh, uh, i would say that that has had a big impact on uh, the overall uh, uh, you know the burden of the infection within the uh, society at large one would have uh, uh, really expected that maybe this uh, survey may have come up with uh, much higher numbers you see because uh, uh, people were saying that yes uh, because of the fatigue maybe uh, the behavior of the society at large was uh, changing but uh, this in a way is encouraging that yes the transmission has not gone to that level uh, wherein uh, uh, you see the cases would go up or the infection would go up so uh, uh, the reason primarily is uh, that uh, hand washing and uh, distancing and wearing of the mask and a very regulated approach in terms of opening up you see uh, if you recollect that uh, 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 from the day of the lockdown till uh, today i mean it is uh, now 10 months since this has happened there has been a gradual process and that process has been very closely monitored it is not this that uh, uh, you know suddenly uh, just as a lockdown is uh, announced and then uh, it is lifted it is not like that so that has again helped in uh, reducing the uh, uh, the morbidity and the mortality due to this particular disease and now we are very hopeful that with the vaccine coming up Uh, uh definitely the immune system of the larger population that we call off as the herd immunity maybe 60% maybe 70% that itself will uh, break the chain of transmission and will further bring down the morbidity and mortality having said that i will also reemphasize the fact that please do not do away with the three core appropriate behavior steps that we talk of that is wearing the mask keeping appropriate distance and of course frequent hand washing be careful be cautious 
I mean, that is the message I would like to give very clearly. Vaccine is there, but don't go with the sense of, uh, you know, a false security that you may be thinking that a vaccine uh, we are 100% protected. That will not happen. So uh, that is my take on, uh, on the present status. COVID appropriate behavior is still the best tool that we have really to fight the virus is what the panelists have been saying day in and day out. And that's something that Rajya Sabha TV too reiterates and keeps reminding our viewers about. So continue to do that and we will stay safe from uh, the virus. All right, taking the discussion forward now, Dr. Murhekar, let's also talk about, uh, you know, uh, this particular aspect that you raised and that other panelists uh, have raised in the discussion as well. Uh, you know, what is the accuracy of the zero survey itself? You know, what is the error margin really? Uh, like you mentioned too, there could be a case or there could be instances where someone has had uh, the infection, but uh, you know, the antibodies are too weak, so it doesn't really show up. That is one. Second, will we be conducting more such surveys and how will it help? Yes, uh, important question. And as uh, Dr. Neeraj mentioned, and as I, I also mentioned earlier, that antibodies, IgG antibodies decline over a period of time. And again, there are two types of antibodies that we detect through zero surveys, uh, mainly that is the antibodies against nucleic acid protein and antibodies against spike protein. And again, the first type of antibodies that is nucleic acid antibodies decline or wane faster as compared to spike protein antibodies. So, uh, so what we measured in December, uh, it is quite possible that people who got infected uh, early in the pandemic, say May, in, in March and April, uh, they might have lost their antibodies. And therefore, the prevalence that we observed now in December might be uh, lower, uh, might be actually underestimation of actual prevalence. So the actual prevalence will be much more. But because the antibodies decline, uh, we might not. Our, our estimations are basically lower underestimation of actual fever. Uh, so th this is an inherent uh, problem with uh, our limitation of uh, zero survey. Uh, so so the, regarding your second question, whether we will be doing uh, or ICMR will be doing uh, another uh, survey. Uh, of course, uh, these are important doing uh, periodic surveys to to know what proportion of population is infected. And where are we with respect to herd immunity or that particular threshold that is required to prevent the transmission? But we also need to understand that now vaccination uh, has, has uh, been initiated and vaccine also is going to produce antibodies. Uh, so we, it will be very important uh, whenever surveys are planned now on is to differentiate or to at least collect information about vaccination uh, of these uh, individuals who are in, included in the survey. So that will then tell as to what proportion of individuals have antibodies because of vaccine and what proportion of individuals are infected uh, naturally or because of uh, wild infection. So, so uh, ICMR certainly, I mean, it will be good to, to repeat similar surveys maybe after two or three months. Uh, when we have still further reduction, uh, hopefully, in number of cases, uh, so maybe after two or three months, another survey will be very useful to know the trajectory of uh, the pandemic in the country. Absolutely. All right. So Dr. Neeraj Nischal, let's also talk about this other aspect of how, uh, you know, the urban class uh, has more zero prevalence than, the, uh, than rural India. So this is something that we need to be concerned about as well going forward because we don't want... Uh, the infection to spread into our hinterland and, you know, ensure that uh, more people are infected there. So these are some things that we need to keep in mind. And these are some things that we need to be uh, wary of going forward, uh, isn't it? Yes. So uh, right at the start of pandemic, it was uh, expected that all the urban, urban uh, cities or the cities where the population density is very high, they will always have high risk of getting uh, this pandemic in uh, more uh, population, basically more population was expected to uh, have this disease. And that, that is what we have been seeing because it's more of a transmission from person to person. So the closer the person, uh, the higher the chances of getting this infection. So if this virus entered a household in a urban city, urban place, then what happened that usually most of uh, the family members got infected. It was almost a uh, hundred percent type of thing, especially in places like Delhi, because we had uh, families coming with infection. So, 
it is all related to population density so now that uh, the uh, urban uh, population have higher zero prevalence but like a place like delhi where the migration migratory population comes a lot for uh, looking for work and everything so all those susceptible population coming to delhi uh, the chances of them getting infection if they have not uh, got this infection in the past that will always be there so all these places will have a susceptible population all the time so that's why whenever we talk about the uh, precautions which we have been talking about that has to be in place till this pandemic ends so we cannot lower down our guard what whatsoever so even in, in delhi we are talking about herd immunity because the zero service so is almost 56 to 57% but again this population will keep on fluctuating the type of population the susceptible population the vulnerable group so it's important uh, uh, we are more concerned about recurrence of this cases in urban cities rather than uh, the rural hinterland because usually the population migrate from there to our place and that, that's the chance when uh, the pandemic will uh, can resurface time to get closing comments now from all my panelists so starting first with you dr sareen so in the last 3 weeks 41 districts have reported no positive cases at all and uh, about 270 districts have had no deaths can this be further widened to more districts more areas and bring them uh, and make the bubble bigger well uh, uh, first of all i'll say it's not a bubble because it won't burst uh, it, it is something that uh, we uh, need to be very clear on that uh, uh, we are moving towards a, play, a, a a situation wherein covid will be under control that uh, goes without saying and uh, it is very clear that uh, uh, the covid appropriate behavior that we've already talked so much about will continue to remain because the virus will not go away we have not still got any uh, uh, you know pharmacological medication which will kill the virus we are just working towards uh, increasing immunity we are working towards ensuring that those who are infected are properly managed so that mortality is reduced but the virus is not going away so soon so we will need to carry on with the covid appropriate behavior and that is my message to all vaccine yes it is uh, uh, definitely going to be helpful vaccine is very safe so please do not hesitate to take the vaccine when you have the time government has already expanded it from healthcare workers to frontline workers and soon you see larger population groups above 50 with comorbidities all those groups will also be taken up in the fold and we are very hopeful that situation will get better but it will get better only if you all help us in making it better please follow covid appropriate behavior thank you Doc, dr murekar what's the best way forward uh yes sir uh, dr uh, sarin mentioned covid appropriate behavior and vaccine accepting vaccination uh, besides that i also feel that we uh, need to continue to have good surveillance just to detect uh, because now there are many districts which are showing very less number of cases but any upsurge uh, maybe because of a new mutant uh, circulating in the community that to detect that we need to find out whether there are clusters or there are outbreaks in the community and for that we would also need good surveillance which we have been doing very well till now so the surveillance uh, need to need to be there to detect any increase in number of cases so that we can take appropriate control measures and uh, dr nishal close the show for us with your concluding remarks yeah so uh, now things look good but uh, my biggest worry is that once schools reopen then how uh, things are going to uh, stay like whether it's going to stay like this or not that's the biggest challenge according to me uh, because as long as children were inside then it was okay but they could be one of the groups uh, who can actually uh, uh, can cause upsurge in cases that's why it's important from uh, every point of view that schools have to take appropriate right they should start right from uh, now that how to ensure that the children learn to live with the virus because this as dr sareen said this virus is not going to go away so we have to ensure that they know how to live with this virus so that they don't bring this virus to their home to their susceptible population which uh, which have been safe till now so that is something we have to be and the way forward would be vaccination social vaccination and uh, biological vaccination which we have been talking about so 
again covid appropriate behavior is the way forward and that has to continue all right on that note then i'll call it a wrap on this edition of covid 19 india fights back thank you to my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us well before i leave rajya sabha tv would like to make an appeal to all its viewers to stay safe from uh, the covid 19 pandemic remember that these small steps can go a long way in defeating the pandemic wear a mask wash your hands and face regularly and follow physical distancing wherever stepping outside stay safe see you again next time